a lot of people in American culture, and even worse in British culture, are trained to imagine that if something is subjective, it's immaterial, unimportant, and unreal. And on the contrary, a lot of the most serious challenges we have as individuals and on a larger social scale, on a political scale, a lot of the most serious challenges we have have everything to do with subjective values, subjective reasoning. Subjective problems and subjective solutions can be all the more important and more intractable than objective ones. In terms of the attitude we have towards the subjective realm, I note that people write in to me all the time saying, well, you know, um, diet and nutrition are subjective. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a technical level on which it's true. What is healthy or unhealthy for you, subjectively, is going to be different than it is for someone else. So that's subjective. So, you know, if you have diabetes, if you're a diabetic, what's healthy for you is not the same as a healthy diet for someone else. Uh-huh. Right. But the whole sphere of dietetics and nutrition is still a science. And the personal realm of responsibility and struggling with the consequences of the choices we make in health, nutrition, and diet, you're not dismissing the importance of that, are you? You're not really diminishing how ineluctable the consequences of our actions are in the realm of diet and nutrition by saying, well, it's subjective. And to use much more blunt language, if you say to someone, this is broccoli, broccoli is healthy, and they say back to you, oh, no, no, what's healthy and unhealthy is subjective, you are within your rights to look at the broccoli, look at that person and say, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, if you have some health condition equivalent to diabetes that means you can't eat broccoli, there must be something really, really wrong with you. No offense, it's subjective. <laughs> subjective doesn't mean what people want to imagine it means. Subjective doesn't mean that you can ignore or dismiss the problem. And really briefly, I've mentioned this before, I knew one woman who was allergic to any kind of fruit or vegetable that contained trace amounts of rubber. And that was interesting to learn about. So there were, there were some fruits and vegetables that would be healthy for me to eat, but that she could not eat because she had that food allergy. All right, let's get down to the real point of this video. Some people wrote in to me in response to the last video I did talking about video games and not just overcoming video game addiction, not becoming a moderate player of video games, but quitting altogether. And quite a few people wrote in and, and thanked me for that video and said it changed their lives. That came as a surprise to me. I did not think it was my best video on the topic, but hey, sometimes it's not, the, sometimes it's not your best video, it's your worst video that makes the difference for people for whatever reason. So uh, someone named Dante wrote in and asked, what do you think if a game is considered a sport? Is that still a waste of time? A game like StarCraft is many ways like chess, even more elaborate, even more stimulating than the game of chess. And there are tournaments for this video game. Is chess also a waste of time? Yes. Now I gave him a very simple, very blunt answer in writing. I just said, yes, they're a waste of time. Yes, adults who play StarCraft should be ashamed of themselves. But in this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a nuanced and sophisticated answer. The point here is not that video games are objectively bad. It's not that video games are objectively bad for you, and it's not that video games are objectively a waste of your time. The question is, in blunt language, if video games are not a waste of your time, as an adult, what the fuck is wrong with you? Now, just like the person who has a dietary allergy that changes what's healthy and unhealthy for them, subjectively, I've got to admit, there are circumstances in which playing video games would not be a waste of your time, or even, for me, would not be a waste of mine. I was once bedridden ill in hospital, 
I'm not going to tell the whole story in the medical details because it's boring. But I had a sickness that was serious enough that I experienced, you know, wasting. Um, like I lost the muscle in my, like my feet and toes. So when I finally got up out of that hospital bed and walked around, like, you know, your feet feel exhausted. It's weird. So I was really, really seriously ill. And whether it was the illness or the medicine I was on, I really couldn't think clearly. I couldn't read a book. Like what I could do in the bed was really limited. It only lasted for a number of days. Um, let's say it was five days or seven days. But I had a period of time where I was in a hospital bed and my ability to read was limited. I did struggle to read, truth be told. And, you know, my mom brought me a plastic model kit, you know, where you assemble pieces of plastic <laughs> into a model. Oh, yeah, and by the way, with the illness, I was also just passing out and falling asleep all the time. Anyway, so bedridden ill in hospital when there was really nothing better to do. And I didn't want to watch TV, you know, for various reasons. Um, okay, so I lay there in that hospital bed and I assembled this model kit. And I actually said to mom, you know what? That was, that was not so bad. And, you know, uh, I think she brought me a second model kit. After that, <laughs> second and a third. Thanks, mom. Now, you might think, hey, this could be the beginning of a great hobby that I could have spent the rest of my life assembling little pieces of plastic and glue into a plastic model. Nope. <laughs> as soon as I got up out of that hospital bed, I had something better to do. As soon as I was no longer mentally disabled or physically disabled, you know, that's really what it is. Temporarily, with that illness, I was mentally and physically disabled. There was something better for me to do as soon as i was able to do something better than assembling that model kit that hobby was a waste of my time whether or not it's a waste of my time is relative to me it's relative to who i am now you know you may have a friend who comes back from the war in afghanistan and who comes back from the war in iraq and is in a hospital bed on painkillers you know, with elaborate injuries, and your friend in that hospital bed, it may be that really all they can do is play video games. You know, they may say to you, you know, I've got this injury and my eyes can't focus well and I can't read and I'm falling asleep and I'm on this medication, this painkiller, and right now when I am awake, about all I can do is, is play video games, okay? It's very sad. I feel sorry for them and I, I would not dispute, okay, you know, man, this is what you're capable of right now. Let's say your friend recovers. Let's say a couple months on, your friend is more mentally alert, more physically vital. You might be in the position of saying to your friend, you know what? It's been three months that you've been lying down in this hospital bed playing video games. And you know what? I think maybe you need some motivation to recognize the extent to which now now you're wasting your time. Now it's become a habit. Now it's become a hobby. Now it's become something that's not just taking your mind off the physical agony you're in. It's become something that's really holding you back in terms of your rehabilitation. And there's no doubt some people are so disabled that they never get up out of that hospital bed, so to speak, whether it's from an injury or from birth. I have a half-brother who is so severely mentally retarded that he has never said a word in any language. He's never spoken a sentence in English, in his first language, presumably. He is extremely severely, he's never had a job. You know, he's not able to go grocery shopping. That's severe mental disability. As far as I know, he also doesn't play video games. But if he did, nobody would say that was a waste of his time, okay? The question of whether or not this is a waste of your time is relative to you. It's relative to what kind of a person you are and who you aspire to be. So if you don't aspire to be better than this, if you don't aspire to be better than a mental eight-year-old, someone who morally and intellectually and even aesthetically has nothing better to do than sit on the couch and play video games, go through this repetitive action again and again, okay? If that's who you are, You've got to recognize that. You've got to say, hey, this doesn't seem like a waste of time to me because I myself am a person of such, such low caliber, of such little potential, intellectually, politically, ethically, creatively, 
You could be painting a picture instead of playing a video game. But if you really think the picture you could paint or the story you could write or the positive difference you could make in the world is not worth doing compared to sitting there and playing that video game like an eight-year-old, that is not a judgment on the video game. That's not a judgment on the objective quality of the video game. That is an objective judgment on you, on your worth as a person. The problem is not the video game. The problem is not the deck of cards. The problem is not a little piece, bunch of pieces of plastic in a box that can be assembled into a model in a model kit. Okay? The problem is you. But there's good news because the solution, the solution is you also.